Hello and welcome to another Retro Crazy. This is effectively a video pack part three, although we are only going to be looking at this particular controller for this part. Now, at the end of the second video, we found that this one didn't work. And I spotted things like, you know, the damage to the cable here, where the cable's hanging out, and inside it was damaged as well. So we're going to look at replacing this cable. Now, to keep it authentic, I've managed to pick up a very similar, almost identical cable. So we should be able to replace this damaged cable with a fresh new one. I'll put the link in the description just showing where I got this. It was a simple eBay search. It's about £2.50, £2.95 a metre, so there's a couple of metres there. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure it goes to the same original length. And all I did was do a search under six core flat cable. And this was one of the results. Getting into this, we've seen how we get in at this end. So we'll do that in a second. But the first thing is getting into here. These are fully re reusable. And there is a trick I found to getting into them. So let's look at that first. Now on each side, you'll see there's a little clip point. And if I turn it over, there's another one here. And the cable itself free moves within the strain relief. So, hmm. Not exactly the best design they've used for strain relief. However, it does allow us to get in and I use some very fine flat screwdriver bits out of my kit. I've taken the two smallest and what I've found is if I push them down as far as they'll go but just to the side, it actually lifts the top clear of the lock and if I match on the other side like so yes it's putting it under a lot of stress however I can now take a pair of pliers and very gently that one locked back in Let's go back and try and very gently just pull that forward. Now, you don't want to pull it straight out. Pull it out so it's out the latches. Take these back out. Now you want to gently feed the cable through a little bit and then pull a bit more, feed the cable through and it'll pop out. Now, the reason I'm saying do it a little bit at a time is if I take it to there, there's the uh, strain relief for it coming out. Oh, and I can immediately see the failure. But the reason for saying it is because these pop out. And if you're unsure of the order that these go in, well, you kind of need to want to see that. I've got a broken one, so I'm going to guess that is the reason for the failure of the controller because that is black and black is normally ground and that matches everything up. Now we want to reuse this so I need to try and get this pin out like so. Now in an ideal world I would want to replace all of these but I don't have any to replace it with so I've already taken a note 
of the order from another working joystick so I know which order they go back in and looking from the back what you should have is black and white and opposite sides at the top row of four and the bottom row should be green, yellow, pink, red. The middle two at the top are no connection, the bottom right one no connection. With that done I can now cut all this, take off the strain relief and remove this. With that done I can put all these to the side at the moment. So I can create this side first easily enough. I've got everything I need now, the connector, all the pins, new cable, the only thing I need is a small zip lock or I could use hot glue to act as some uh, strain relief so you can't just pull the cable straight out the back of the plug. So it is a little bit wider than the original as you can tell by the fact I am struggling to get this to go through. So first thing I need to try and feed that through. Now one thing I can say is that is a really good tight fit and that's actually going to help because when it comes to strain relief having that as rigid as it is once everything's in place is, is going to work to our benefit. So I'm going to pare back some of this to expose the cables and then we can look at soldering these pins onto each cable and then rebuilding the first end of the connector. So with that all done, I'm now going to use what's called a third hand tool. This is a very old one and I'm missing parts. However, it's great at holding things, which is why it's a third hand tool. And what I'm going to do now is just tin these wires. And that sets them up ready for soldering onto the connectors. With each of those now tinned, I can take one pin and I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to tin them and solder a wire on. They're all now connected, but before I start putting them in and feeding everything through, I'm just going to go round each one. That one's a little bit more open than the rest. And I'm just going to close it up slightly. These are a friction fit connection. And the last thing I want is the friction fit not working properly. You've got to be very careful doing this last thing you want to do is crush them flat. So with that done, I can now take my connector block. I don't have a pink, but I do have a blue, so I'll substitute that one. So from the top row, I have black and white. And now from the bottom, green, yellow, pink and red from the side. That's so tight, I'm going to risk it without the, the cable tie. And hopefully that's one end done. I can see all the connectors, they're all through where they should be. So now we can pop this back to the side and go back to the joystick. So with this end all off and replaced onto the new cable, let's strip this side. Now if you remember, this side was also badly deteriorated and we put fresh strain relief hoping that the whole thing was still working. Unfortunately it wasn't. Now unfortunately I did glue this in place. So it's good to make removal much harder. I don't know if I'll be able to or if I'm going to have to break this off. 
And if I do have to break it off, I do have a spare. I 3D printed more than one, just in case. You can see where all the cables come in and they meet on the underside of this board. So it would be handy if we could actually get this out to work on the underside. The other option we've got is we could cut this and then splice the new cable onto it and then individually uh, heat shrink all of the connections. But in fairness, that's not my preferred method. I'd rather see if we can get this spring clip on the underside. Oh dear, there we are. If we can get this to come off and come up the shaft, and if we can, we can drop the entire mechanism out and get the board out. Whatever happens, I need to remove this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut all this here. This cable, because of the age and the condition, I'm now just going to bend. It does make this so much easier to work on because I'm now I'm not fighting the cable as well. So let's see what I can do first of all about this. Nope, that's on absolutely solidly. What I may need to do is heat it and take it off that way because it is plastic, it will melt. I've got to be careful not to put too much heat and transfer the heat down to the bottom. Yeah, that would be just as bad. I'm going to leave this on at the moment because what it does do is stop the whole thing from pushing down through the, out, the bottom of the joystick. And if I put it there, it should have some bracing as well. So it, it really cannot go anywhere. This is going to be an absolute pig to get off. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to attack it yet or how easy it's going to be on camera. But what it is, is lots of little um, prongs go into the center and they're sprung, so they spring down and grip whatever they're around. There is a groove in the shaft. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. So they're currently hitting that uh, lip and obviously won't come up. However, if I can open them enough to get them over the lip, I would be able to lift that entire thing up and off. The alternative is to basically destroy that and see if I can get a replacement. I don't currently have a replacement, so that is not my preferred option. But let's see if we can get this off to start with. Hindsight is 2020. That's it now off. The hot air allowed it to soften the plastic and then I was able to get the knife through it, weaken the structure and then it just broke off. So that worked quite well. So let's throw this in the bin and now see how we get this off. Now, normally with these things, you come up from the, the bottom, you can pop them open sometimes or you can get something down and open them and lift them. There are so many of these fine veins, I genuinely don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do this. So let's uh, just try and see what happens. Okay, it's lifted. It's past the groove, which is down here. And I did that by going underneath and keeping upward pressure on the clip and just popping each vein in turn. And it clicked and jumped up and clicked and jumped up. Now I'm not saying it wasn't painful, trust me it was. It still won't come up of its own accord because the veins are still trying to grab onto the shaft. So I'm gonna to have to continue this bit by bit and just click the veins and get it to jump up a bit at a time. However, this technique is also working, just twisting, keeping pressure on and lifting. It is scoring the shaft, however, a small price to pay for getting this apart. And there we go. I can now, oh, let that go. All this should come off. 
Now, if I wanted, I can remove not just the circuit board, but I can twist this off. Try to twist this off. There we go. And I can lift everything out for a full clean now. You can see just uh, how much the plastic's worn. So there was a little damage on this. This leg here is snapped, but not all the way through. I'm going to run some super glue on it, hold it down and just let it set. With that done, we can pop this to the side, let it set fully, and actually have a look at this. And here we are, this is the joystick. What they've done is this is a flexible steel plate, soldered on the underside at both sides. And in the middle, they actually have the contact which sits, I don't know if you'll be able to see those, just in the middle. So as you press down, it makes connection. That's how simple this is. I'm not sure I'll be able to clean those contact points very well without desoldering everything and redoing everything from scratch. But our main priority here is going to be resoldering these. I will drop a little bit of deoxit into each one. Maybe some isopropyl. Because I will get a, a basic scrub on it, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. So just before... I do the final part before reassembly, which is to solder on the new cable. Just before you throw your old cable in the bin, undo all the knots and then measure it against your new cable, cut it to size. I've left a little bit extra to account for the outer sheath I'm going to have to remove, but it's an important step. Don't just throw it willy-nilly into the bucket. I have already measured this. They're about a metre and a half. So I had already measured before I ordered the cable. Now I should point out that when I'm scoring this, I'm really just scoring the surface and I'm only going through at the very start. What I'm looking to do is as I pull the material, it tears down the cut line. So even though you've seen me go round and score all the way round, I've not actually cut through to the center core at all. And as I've pulled, it's torn and that's why this side tore differently. Because I started tearing that side and it tore in a different place. I wasn't quite through deep enough to give it a proper weak fault. So I started on the other side and that tore right the way around and took all that off with it. Now interestingly, there is a hole. So the theory is you could actually put the wires through from the top, solder from the bottom. I'm not quite sure why they did it that way. Maybe it's because by the time you bend them and you've got more stress on the, on the wire. But we will just follow this method that they've used. Well, that's that done, it's all cleaned up, but it's a bit of a sad day. That's all that's left out of my leaded solder that I've had for 37 years. Uh, well, I do have another roll, but not of this particular type, I believe. This was RS, made in UK, Girls of Flux. <laughs> That was half a kilo, 500 grams net. Oh well. Now, 
we can see if the negative was broken at the other end. Look where it goes. Right the way around the outside edge to here, but also right into the core. So that was the main ground for pretty much everything. And with that broken, yeah, of course it was never going to work. So let's pop everything back together. Um, I did think about lubricating the ball, but then I thought, hold on, yeah, over time the grease will become a paste with the, the plastic breaking off and that paste will probably end up doing more damage than anything. So I am not going to re-lubricate re this. The hard bit, as ever, will be refitting this, but, oh, no, maybe not. It's just going to push on easily enough. That's excellent. Right, let's reassemble. So with that all done, let's find out if this works. So here we are ready for testing. I've got the G7000 ready. One controller, and don't worry, I haven't glued this one on yet. So let's find out what happens. Well, down works. Slow and fast, so left and right. Up, I think the button needs a good clean more than I've done. Fire does not seem to work. Okay, let's go back to the blue mat. So the question is, how many are going to flame me in the comments for not having checked everything before I put it back together? Ah, one of those things. So I'm going to do a continuity test on the wiring. That's what I should get if I've got a direct connection. I'm going to use this little patch lead and starting at the top, which we should know is working, should be black, which should be the top of all of these. It's all right. So we know black is fine. So, it's nothing that I've done incorrectly. What I might do is reflow some of these anyway, because it looks like they could be, you know, a little bit better. I think the buttons are contaminated, and that's why it's not picking up. So here we are again, still haven't glued that on, all connected in, let's find out, so should be speed up, yep, slow down, yep, down and up, all seem to be working, what about fire, and we've got a fire button, okay this is not an easy game if this is meant to be two players. However, that's it now done. It's complete, it's working, and if I compare it, it's not too far off the original. It's a little bit thicker. But you know what? That works nicely. So I'm back to a two player on this. I'm going to suspect, I think what happened with the fire button was the felt pad moved on the plastic sheet. On the second reassembly, I noted when the base went down, the plastic sheet moved and the pad was no longer over it. I'm going to suspect when I look back at the footage, 
I'll see that pad had moved, which means pressing down possibly wasn't pressing down far enough and therefore it was hitting the stop on the button before it could go any further. So all that's left for me to do is now officially glue this on for the final time and it's done. So thank you for watching, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you on the next Retro Crazy.